Topology is a fascinating subject concerned with geometric objects and continuous deformations between them. It begins with the simple notion of an open set living in a topological space and beautifully generalizes to describing shapes in various dimensions. So what exactly is a topological space? A space is one of the most basic objects in modern mathematics, and as you advance in your studies, you quickly realize just how vast the number of spaces there are. The basic idea is that a space is just a set which has been given some structure that defines relationships between elements of the set. So depending on what type of objects are in your set and what the relationships between them are, this will determine the mathematical space that the objects live in. If your objects are quantum states, then they will live in a Hilbert space. If your objects are abstract vectors, the space they live in is a vector space. The curious thing is that there exists a well-structured hierarchy of a subset of these mathematical spaces, and the topological space serves as the most abstract and fundamental of them all. Consider a vector space again. The key properties of this space are, there exists a zero element, you can add vectors together without leaving the space, and you can perform scalar multiplication without leaving the space as well. However, in this space, although there is a structure that defines relationships between the basic objects, there is neither a notion of distance nor a notion of angles between vectors. In order to be able to measure these quantities, the vector space needs to be endowed with some additional structure, namely that of an inner product, which is a function satisfying these criteria. Once this occurs, the vector space turns into a new space, an inner product space. Abstracting further, we find another space that has a more general concept of distance called the norm. The norm of a vector is frequently defined as the square root of the inner product of a vector with itself. Mathematicians say a norm defined in this way is induced by the inner product since it depends on how the inner product was defined. Not all norms are defined in this way though. More generally, a norm is a function that satisfies these criteria for any vectors in the space. So if our space has a norm defined on it, it has been further generalized and is now called a normed vector space. Applying one more step of abstraction, we enter a new space that has an even more general notion of distance. Here, instead of a norm defined on our space, we have a function called a metric that satisfies the following criteria. The metric gives the distance between two objects, and the mathematical space that these objects live in is called a metric space. The final step of abstraction is to get rid of even this minimal concept of distance to finally arrive at a topological space. A space which is entirely defined in the language of set theory and just as set theory aims to provide a foundation for the rest of mathematics, the topological space is a sort of foundation for other mathematical spaces. As you work your way down this hierarchy, each smaller space is just a special case of the larger space. So every metric space is a topological space, every normed vector space a metric space, and every inner product space a normed vector space. Now since a topological space is defined in the language of sets, We'll next consider a simple set and use some intuition to build up to the precise definition. Consider a set that has just three elements. We'll call this set X and label the elements of X as A, B, and C. The key motivating question for topology is to ask what are all the subsets of X? Well, first, the whole thing is a subset of itself. So X is one subset. Also, the set containing each element is a subset. So we have three more. We can also pair each element with one other element to form another three subsets. Lastly, as any mathematician will remind you, we can't forget the empty set, which is the set that contains no elements and is a subset of every set. So these are all the subsets of X, and the next thing we can do is to form different collections with them. For instance, we can collect all of them together to form a collection we'll call T sub D. You will see why I'm calling it this in just a moment. 
We could also form a collection with just the empty set and X. And there are various other ways we can collect these subsets together. What a topological space does is to select only those collections that satisfy three simple criteria. First, the empty set and the whole set must be in the collection. So any collection that excludes one of these will not be part of a topological space. Second, when you take an arbitrary union of subsets, you must remain in the collection. And since it's arbitrary, this means that the union can be finite or infinite. Lastly, the finite intersection of subsets must remain in the collection. So whenever we have a set X for which we have chosen some collection T that satisfies these criteria, then we say we have established a topology on X. And the pair XT are called a topological space. Now in any instance, when you are given a specific set, there is a genuine choice you have of which topology you can establish on it. And for any set, you can always choose to collect all of the subsets which will establish the so-called discrete topology. Or you can choose just the empty set and the set itself, which will establish the indiscrete topology, sometimes also referred to as the trivial topology. Now I'd like to emphasize that although these two topologies can be established on any set, these are really just two extreme cases. The really interesting topologies lie somewhere in the middle of them and the number of topologies available to choose from will be largely dependent on how many elements you have in your set. For instance, if you have a one element set, you have only one choice where the indiscrete and discrete topology coincide. For a two element set, there are four choices for topologies. A three element set has 29 choices, and a four element set has 355 choices. You can see the number of choices grows quickly. So as the size of the set increases, the number of interesting topologies available also rapidly increases. While this definition is admittedly simple and abstract, it is also profound. A topology turns out to be the weakest structure you can establish on a set in order to still be able to have two pivotal mathematical notions, convergence of points, and continuity of maps. Topics we will explore in future videos.